Remember the good old days? Waking up in the morning, running down to the creek and washing your face, wetting down your hair and brushing your teeth. Remember how good that cold water felt and how it woke you up? Don't you miss those days? Yeah, right. I don't. The water heater has made things so much more comfortable, and when they quit, we miss them. Unfortunately, there are very few customer serviceable parts on water heaters, but there are a couple of things you can do to get the best performance out of them. Water heaters have safety devices in them to protect us. As always, if anything goes bad on them, get professional help. And another thing, when lighting water heaters, make sure you're not directly in front of the burner tube. Yeah, I got a story for that too, but I'll save it for later. There's only two manufacturers of water heaters today. They are the Suburban and the Atwood, and both make manuals and automatics. If you look inside the door, you'll be able to tell which make you have. Let's start with the manual light models. The lighting procedures are very similar to the furnaces. Make sure that the propane is on. To light the pilot light, you should have a striker or lighter like this one. It makes lighting a lot easier. Always light the striker first. If your control looks like this one, turn the dial to pilot. Notice it's spring loaded. Put the lighter into the burn tube and turn beyond the spring. When the pilot lights, remove the lighter and hold the pilot switch for about 30 seconds. Release the knob. If the pilot stays lit, turn the knob to the on position and the water heater will light. You can adjust the temperature with this lever. Notice it has a recommended setting to start with. If the pilot refuses to light the first time, try again. One way to tell if things are working correctly is the ease in which they light. If you have to try several times, it's telling you that you should have the water heater serviced. This is very important. These controls have what is called an emergency cutout, or an ECO. It's a protection device designed to shut down the water heater if the temperature goes to an unsafe level. It's built into the control and if problems arise, say no water in the tank or the thermostat goes bad, it shuts down and will not light again. The entire control has to be replaced. Now let's move on to automatics, the DSI models or direct spark ignition. These are very simple to operate. Make sure the propane is on and flip the switch. When you do, the light should come on. That's telling you that the process has begun. After a few seconds, the light will go out and if the water heater fires and everything is okay, the light will stay off. When you flip the switch and the light doesn't come on, you may have a problem. Wait and listen to see if the water heater lights. If it does, the bulb in the switch might be burnt out. If it doesn't, check the fuses. That's about all you can do. If it's not a fuse, you'll need an RV tech. There's a little brain box or module in your water heater that controls everything. It also has a protection device called an ECO, or an emergency cutout switch. It will shut down the system if everything is not right. Most systems have what is called a one-try board. That means after one unsuccessful attempt at trying to light the water heater, it goes into standby mode and turns the light back on. You have to shut the switch off and then on again. If there's air in the lines, you might have to do this a few times. Again, these types of water heaters have safety devices in them, but they're not as radical as the manual type. If the water heater gets too hot, it will shut down, but after it cools down, you'll be able to relight it. The Outwood style will automatically reset itself when it cools down, but if you have the Suburban style, you'll need to push the button on this pad. There are two reset buttons, one for propane heat and the other for electric. If one pops, usually both go. Push both of them. If you feel or hear a click, the reset is complete. You can't adjust the thermostat on automatics. If you find you'd like to have the water a little hotter, you can have the thermostat changed, but this should be done by an RV tech. In the early years, the manufacturers put 140 degree thermostats in the water heaters, but I think some people were getting hurt with that hot of water. So they set them at 120 degrees and give the customer the option to increase it if they desired to do so. If you decide to have yours changed, be aware that the difference between 120 and 140 degrees, it doesn't sound like much, but it is. Be careful, especially if you have small children. If your water heater is equipped with an optional electric heater, you can save on propane and they're a lot quieter. Of course, you have to be plugged into power for them to work, and they can use as much as 13 amps of power to run, so you can't use them everywhere. Remember what we talked about in the electrical section? These have a separate element and thermostat, and you can increase the temperature on these ones too. 
Some RVs have a switch inside the coach to turn them on and off. They look like a regular light switch and usually are marked water heater, but they all have a small switch on the water heater itself. If you have both switches, they both have to be on for the electric water heater to work. Safety is always important. <laughs> of course, like I said, I have a story. I'm mobile and for the best part I work alone. One day I'm working on this real temperamental water heater and the on off switch is in the bathroom in the middle of the coach and the water heater is on the other side of the entry door. I need to be close to this thing when it's turned on and off so I can hear and see what it's doing. I flagged down this young fella and asked him to run the switch while I listened and watched. I had him turn it on and off a few times and I told him to wait. He didn't hear me and of course he turned on the switch about the same time I put my head down by the burner tube. This thing shot out about a two foot flame, knocked me on my butt, the one side of my face looked, I'd, looked like I'd fallen asleep on the beach and my hair and mustache looked as though I'd been dusting under the bed with my head. I was fine but my barber never let me live it down. So be careful around exhaust tubes of water heaters and furnaces.